Good evening. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to, meeting to order. And first up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. I have Eric Martins. Yep. I am, uh, you want me to begin? Please do. Yes. Yeah, so I'm uh, applying for a permit um, <clears throat> for Hanus Jewelers. And uh, let me just pull up the address really quick. For a what? Hanus I'm Jewelers. applying for a sign permit for uh, Hanus Jewelers. Okay. That is on three. That's in the mall, or, right? That's three, 344 Russell Street. That's in the mall, isn't it? They're moving to oh. uh, next to Hot Table. Oh. Yeah, I actually couldn't attest to where exactly that is. I didn't. I didn't survey the location. Do you have a picture of what the sign will look like? Uh, I do. I'm not sure how to share that though. I'm fairly new at Zoom, so. Um, okay. Well, first of all, let me enable. Um, I have a PDF I can share you guys. So uh, you are now enabled to share. Okay. Um, so we find it works best if you have the PDF active in your background. Okay. And then uh, use the share screen button at the bottom of the page. Okay. To navigate to it. Yep, not a problem. Bear with me, sorry. Oh. This meeting is being recorded. Thank you, John. Can you, are you able to see my screen or? Not yet. Okay, sorry. Can you see the PDF on your screen? Yes, I can. Okay. So go back to the Zoom window. Okay. Click on the share screen, which is a green button at the bottom of the page. Yep. And that brings <sighs> up, it looks like a directory. Sure. And you just navigate to the one you are going to do. Click on it once. Yep. And then there is another button in there that says share, share mm -hmm. screen or something like that. Click on that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's telling me to open system preferences. <laughs> this is going to become a whole thing. I apologize. Um, if you want to email the PDF to... To Bill? Yeah. Planning, yeah. Email planning, planning at hadleyma.org. Okay. Well, by all means, if you guys want to move on to something else in the meantime, this might take me a few minutes. Okay. We'll come back to you. Okay. Appreciate that. Yep. We have the Zen Zengier. Zen Engineer. Lucky Sparkle. Uh, hey, I'm clicking the right buttons now. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm here as the um, representative for Ideal Storage. We recently submitted an application for site plan review permit new facility on uh, South Maple. And you know, I, I think this meeting is fairly administrative in just determining the fees for that um, and setting hearing dates and anything else that I would need to do to make sure we have a complete application. So the file that was submitted was, uh, first of all, I do have three paper copies. I picked up a box from the town clerk's office. So uh, I have those at home, Jim, if, for the people who are going to want paper copies. Um, I was sent a link, uh, Dropbox, I guess, or something, um, because the other files are too big to share directly. Um, and I may not have sent that link around to everybody, um, but uh, we did have a an initial presentation uh, on this. So do you have anything that you are able to put up just sort of as a general overview? 
Yes, I can share my screen here. Let me make it a little more visible and jump down to, well, here's the overall site plan. I don't have a color presentation today. I'm not expecting to do the, you know, the whole song and dance for the full application to the board, uh, but to give a sense of what's going on, um, South Maple Street is here, the rail trail. Well, we, we, have, we can't see what you've got there. All I'm seeing is a black screen. Oh, really? Okay, well, uh, let me try again. I have two monitors. I realize sometimes when I move it from one monitor to the next, it drops. How's that? No good. No <laughs> black. Oh, there we go. Oh, there Joe was. Okay. Okay, great. Good. Yeah, I've developed a certain amount of faith in Zoom over the last year and a half, but basically any technology is prone to bailing on you. Um, okay, so um, just to orient briefly, we have South Maple Street on the west side of the property, the rail trail just north of that. Uh, the malls are up here on the north and Walmart is up here uh, northwest of the site. And currently all of this is um, Gordon Smith uh, property under contract. There's a four acre parcel here, 4.2 acres, uh, upon which uh, the applicant is interested in installing a, a three-story climate-controlled storage facility, um, a very uh, architecturally advanced one as far as I can tell, and we can uh, look at those images if you're interested, as well as a one-story sort of garage-style standard uh, run-of-the-mill storage facility in the back of the, the new fancy building. And of course, you know, parking and stormwater, um, all of that good stuff. Um, is is the current proposal. Um, I can certainly go into the whole song and dance to the best of my ability if you're interested, but I, I don't believe that is uh, no. what we're going to do tonight. because we, we don't want that time. We just want to brief yeah. over you what's going on. Yeah, that's, well, this is what's going on. Um, do, are there any questions? Okay. <clears throat> what am I seeing at the bottom right corner? Down here? Yep. Uh, this is the septic field area. Uh, we've had to carve that out. Uh, as you can see, the pavement has to go around it. The best soils, I'm going to back out a little bit here. The best soils for the property um, are all through here. So that we have our stormwater infiltration will be here and the septic system is here. Bizarrely and mercifully, there is a mound of sand on this portion of the site, which we're taking advantage of. Okay. Who are you using for a viewing engineer? for uh, which part of the project? The, the, on, on behalf of the town, who is reviewing the plans? Oh, the peer review, that is Berkshire Design Group. They already have uh, a plan set digitally. Okay. Okay. Uh, one of the things that was mentioned last time in the was uh, North uh, South Maple Street, there is a water line. Water line was inadequate for fighting a fire across the road at a, uh, at a big garage. And uh, there was some concern when a subdivision was going on, was proposed further down. So you may have to go to the water department in, in the town and see if you're going to need an upgrade because you're going to need sprinkler systems in there and uh, you yeah. may have to upgrade the the water main on uh, South Maple Street. We we are aware of that possibility. I, I have specifically asked. Uh, for, okay, good. That's Yeah, and I'm, I'm looking forward to the full review from the water department. They didn't give me a definitive answer yet. Okay. So who did you who did you say whether the peer re review engineer was? Berkshire. Berkshire. Oh, Brookshire Design, okay. Right. Okay. Okay, so we'll set a public hearing for this. Do you have an application form? Yes, that has been submitted. Uh, I can bring it on the screen if you're interested. No, 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 it, it, it's in the plans, I'll get that. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm assuming your email is on the plan someplace or on the application form? Yeah, it's on my title block and um, all my letterhead. Okay, so we'll set a public a public hearing for this on is August seventeenth. Okay, or is that too soon? Uh, 
Um, it, I think it's going to be fine. Let me please just verify with my my calendar here. It'll only take a second. Is that okay with everybody else on the board? It's fine as long as, as as you know, the peer review sometimes comes in the last minute. Uh, yeah, they said they were hoping to get it done by the 28th of July. So that's plenty okay. of time. Um, and the 17th of August works for my schedule. So if it works for the board, please let's book it. Okay. And uh, you are also coordinating with the Conservation Commission. You have a he hearing scheduled with them. We do not yet have a hearing scheduled. Um, we, I, I'm quite aware that uh, we need to make a notice of intent application and that is uh, hot on the trails of this application. Um, this design of course being the, the technically uh, comprehensive one. Um, so we, we're, we're just beginning that process knowing that there's always back and forth between boards, um, you know, little changes in one can impact the decisions of the other. So uh, okay. you know, I'll try and keep all make, of that flowing. Make sure you get a copy to the fire chief, fire department, uh, and, and go over these plans with him because this is a big building. We want to make sure that he's okay with the design. Okay, so normally the fire department isn't included in the review process, so I should contact. They they normally send them a set of plans, but in this case, I think you may want to make a special permit, special attempt to sit down with him or at least make sure he reviews them. All right, I will reach out to the chief. I mean, most of our buildings are two-story and stuff like that. This one's three-story and it's, it's tall. I just want to make sure that he's Every, he's okay with access. That's all. Uh, absolutely. Um, no. I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll be okay. I did uh, touch base with them at the beginning of the project when we decided okay. to have a drive on the north side that was at the fire department's request. So okay. I think we'll be good. I brought them in at the preliminary stages, but this is the final design. Okay. So we'll set the public hearing for... August 17th at 6.45 p.m. All right. Jim, the fee? He was asking about the fee. The fee, oh, the fee, oh, the fee for this will be 375. I will get your application. I will sign it, put a fee on it, and email it back to you so that you can bring a check to the town hall. All right, so I'll, I'll expect uh, something by email that was an yeah. official fee application. Okay. What about mailing late uh, uh, butters on mailing labels? Um, I'm not sure if they're on mailing labels. I have the list uh, as part of the application, the certified list from the okay. clerk. But if I need to put it on mailing labels, no, no problem. I can do that. Either on mailing labels or envelopes. Your choice. We need two sets. Okay. Whichever is easier for you. Um, I'm not sure it will matter. They'll probably both come out of a printer. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that will be submitted with the check for the fee, yes? That should be fine, yeah. Okay. Yeah, actually, when you, when you, the, the mailing labels or the envelope should be put into the planning board mailbox in the town hall not given to the clerk. The check will go to the clerk with the application form. The envelopes or mailing labels will go in a planning board mail slot right outside her office. Okay, yeah, I know that set of boxes. Okay. okay. Um, anything else to consider before the 17th next month? No, well, that should be good. All right. Well, in which case, I'll stop the share. Thank you for your time. Oh, as far as, far as for the at for the meeting, you'll bring a color rendering of what the building's going to look like. Color, yes. Uh, we we have a black and white rendering in the plan set, um, and I'm I'm assuming that things are going to remain on Zoom for next month. Yes. Yes. I'm I'm accustomed to bringing a color plan, of course, and 
you know, hearing those words bring a plan made me think that maybe Zoom would be coming yeah. to an end, but. Yeah. And signage. Plus signage, yes. Okay. I will make sure the architect does provide that. I believe he has a color elevation uh, that does show the building sign. Okay. Very good, thank you, see you in a month. All right, thank you very much, have a good night. Eric Martin, you got the uh the Hanush, yeah. Hang on a sec. Let me okay. get in here. There we go. That's it. So I'm not sure this may actually be the uh, uh it might be the uh, men's warehouse space. Right. Yeah, I could. I, I can't say for sure. Um, I just submitted the paperwork today, and the job was just. Uh, yeah, we just sold the job yesterday, so. Um, all I have for reference is this this picture. Okay, so that is works out to 40 square feet. Uh, I was aware of the bylaws, so just made yeah. sure to make it. When, when you say backlit, is that a halo lighting? Uh, I, internally lit with, with a translucent vinyl. That's not allowed. Yeah. It's uh, not. Okay, let me. Combination is not allowed. Which is why what you're replacing has all the goosenecks. Yeah, I see. Okay, so we'd have to go. The letters okay. have to be opaque. Okay, so it'd have to be something uh, a routed, like a, like a PVC kind of sign. What you're saying? The letters have to be opaque. Okay. They so cannot be the letter or the lighting cannot show through the letters. What we generally see is like the goosenecks illuminating it or the halo lighting where the, the source is behind it. Okay. Not to say that that's the only option. Okay, so there can't be LEDs inside the letters is is, is how I'm understanding this? Oh, right. The letters have to be opaque. Right. right. The lighting cannot shine through the letters. Okay, so we could, we could alter the specifications of the sign to be a halo lit instead of internally lit. We have plenty of those, yeah. I'm not quite sure what you just said. I said that um, <clears throat> somebody else said, I think, uh, we, could, we could alter it to be a, a halo lit sign instead of an internally illuminated sign. So that the light, light is shining in the background rather than through the letters. And that's fine. Yeah, okay. the letters have to be opaque. I repeat that for the third time. Right, you know, yeah, I understand. I understand. The, the lighting can be behind the letters, or, and the letters have to be opaque so that the light does not shine through them. Okay. Or you can use the gooseneck lighting that's there. All right. But internally, a light lighting that shines through the letters is not permitted. Okay, I'll take that into account. So, um, I guess I can just consider this to be um, lighting in the background instead of the, the original intent. Yeah, so we, we'll, we meet first and third Tuesdays of the month. So um, <clears throat> if you think you have the capacity, we're gonna be here for a while. If you think you have the capacity to redesign it tonight, go for it. Otherwise, uh, come back in two weeks. Okay, yeah, unfortunately not. I don't have... Um, Okay. All the the, uh, the tech that I need is at our shop. And I'm, I'm at home right now. So, right. all right, yeah, I'll uh, yeah I'll render the you know rent re-render these drawings and then I'll I'll meet you guys in a couple weeks. Okay, that's fine. Okay, okay, very good. All right, thank you for your help, guys. Yep. Okay, Bye. have a good night, Mr. Iser. Yes. 
We're going to get rid of our Hanush. I like the background. Okay, cool. So I'm here again for Mr. Naris at 12 Russell Street. Last meeting, I showed you several signs, one on two on the building uh, proper and two over the garage doors. And the concern was how many square feet that covered. And it is 60 square feet total for all four of those signs. So that is under the 64 square foot threshold. Okay. Uh, item number two, he, I sent Bill and Jim two emails today. One is a picture of a sign that he would like to hang on the building temporarily that says basically coming soon. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly what it says, but uh, if Bill can find it and put it on the screen, that would be helpful. I don't know if there's any concerns from the board about a temporary sign, but we just want to be play it safe. Okay, let me help. Okay. Um, that's the one yeah i don't see a problem with that sign okay how big it's two by seven 14 square feet what's our bylaw say on temporary signs bill can you Pull it up on your other not, screen. Not, not to exceed 60 days or something like that. Yeah, that's, I was wondering I if there's a time limit. Yeah, well, he's he's in a big hurry. The, the state keeps coming to see him every day, wondering when he's going to be out and blah, blah, blah. So he is doing his best to get out of there. So I'm certain the sign won't be up for 60 days. Uh, I'll be surprised if it's up for 30. Yeah, temporary signs must conform to all the requirements for permanent signs with respect to side yard and height. Um, not affixed to utility poles. And um, no sign shall remain more than 60 days. Okay. It's, uh, so if, if the sign is appropriate, it'll go up tomorrow and it'll come down as soon as he gets there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we, we've uh, not approved the signs yet for him. Is that correct, Dan Randy? Well, I think you did last week, but you were last meeting, but you were concerned about the size. So I don't know exactly how it was left. Uh, maybe you didn't because you were concerned about the size. Let me see what I sent out to the building inspector. I forgot what we did. No, the only one we approved that I we, we approved last time was the uh, Pat Hotel. Okay. So I don't know if Bill still has the signs that he can put back up and you can look at them one more time, I or if anybody's memory is wonderful. And uh, let's see what we can do here. And yeah, I got it in an email from July 6th. That is when you oh. sent it. That's when he sent it to you, Bill. Yeah, it's it, it's he's it's in a different account. Okay. Uh, so exotic signs. Okay, let me get back to here and try sharing that. Nice. That's it. So there's 
three signs there on the front of the building. And then there's another one on the west side that is similar to the, the big one on the front. He's got to put new windows in on the west side, correct? Well, that's my next uh, email that I sent to Bill. Uh, the window that you're looking at is basically going to stay the same. I don't know if he's thinking about making it a little bit bigger, but uh, then he wants to put a, a bigger window on the west side. There's a, a window on the west side that's similar in size to the one to the left of the door. And he wants to enlarge that because there's no other windows on that side of the building. So let's, that, if we could just stick with signs for a minute, let me stop sharing the first one and get the side with that's the side window or the side 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 sign right so and again all four of those signs are less than 60 square feet total or around 60 square feet but less than 64 square feet okay so i'll make a motion to approve the sign package and i would second it I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor, aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? I right, leave that one up if you would, Bill, please. Wait, wait a minute, Randy. Let me finish. Motion oh, I'm passes. sorry. That's okay. Motion passes unanimously. Just want to mention that. All right. What's the number of this, Randy? 10 to 12. No, 10 to, 10 to 12, Russell? Yes. Okay. Did we discuss the funny image on the fascia metal? Is that just some kind of photo distortion? No, that's called peeling paint. Ah. And that that's one of the things I'm gonna talk about as well. So the the he wants to enlarge this window we're looking at. And I'm assuming it's going to be about double in size to what he shows there or what is on the building. And the color of the building will be what he's got now. So he's gonna have a white building and his blue and white signage. Are those windows going to have any signs hanging in them? Mm, I'm not aware of any, Joe, but if, if there's a concern, let me know so I can make him aware. Yeah, yeah, please do. What are you What are you concerned about? Well, lighting lighting as a sign hanging from the window. Okay, I think All we right. we do allow an open sign, but that's correct. <laughs> some places like uh, oh, Four Seasons, you can't see what's inside because of all of the posters in the window. <laughs> okay, gotcha. All right, so an open sign is allowed. Nothing else. Okay, now do you want me to go back to the other email you? Uh, you can do that. It's just a, a, a two dimensional uh, of what he's planning and I've, I've hatched in. So if you would, you could do that, Bill, and I'll try to okay. talk about what I can. All right, so let me stop sharing on this first one and then Start sharing on that one. All right, so that, like I said, this is a two dimensional and you'll see uh, where it says office and at the bottom of the screen, there's a dimension of 22 feet, six inches, which is just an architect's number. The, the building itself is 30 feet wide. Uh, 22, six is where the bathroom is gonna start. But anyhow, in the corner, going from right to left is a, a little hatched area. That's the new window area he wants to put in there. And the plan you're looking at is apparently done by a cousin of his from India because title block has got an India address on it. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's all he's got for right now. He does not have a rendering of the side. Uh, I don't know if that's necessary. If it is, you let me know and I'll make sure he gets one. 
if what we've looked at already is satisfactory, then so be it. Is he canceling the door on the west side? There is no door that I'm aware of. There is in the picture. We the one with, there was a door on the west side. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, you're right. So, yes, that would go. I guess that would go away because he doesn't show it here. So, I'm sorry. Unless he's going to have, unless that's like a storefront window when he's going to have a door in the storefront. But I don't think so. It only looks to me like the door is where it says office entry. Yep. So, based on this, there's no door there. So if that changes, I'll be back. Okay. All right. I mean, I don't see a big, I don't see a problem with, with the window. No. Um, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I don't even know if we need to make a motion on the on that one. Do you think it, do you think we need anything, Bill? Well, you make a motion to waive further site plan approval for the changes that they have showed us. Um, yes. Okay, so I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval. Uh, Large window, white, and cancel door on west. Does that right. sound right? Yep. Sounds right to me. That's the motion. Do we have a second? So if you're on mute, Mike. Second, yeah. We got a motion and a second. My Any dog was barking. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. I'll get all around to the building, Inspector Randy, on both of those. Okay, great. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. And that is all I have, but I, I will ask a question. Who do I need to see about the contents of a, an as-built plan for Shattuck Estates roadways? Do I talk to you guys or do I talk to Chris at the DPW? Well, we've had uh, a communications hiccup on trying to figure out exactly we, we've been operating on the standard that the type of as -built plan you have been doing has been right. sufficient. Chris seems to think that something more is required, but uh, we are having a little trouble figuring out exactly what that is. All right, so you may I remember will... that this has been an issue with um, hey, maybe Ray as well. Right, that I'm very aware of. So I will go talk to Chris and hopefully we can come to some kind of an agreement because I mean, Berkume stuff has been underground for a long time and without prior knowledge of what an as built requirements would be. I think a lot of the stuff that Chris wants is not going to be available because uh, uh, it's all covered up. So anyhow, hopefully he'll understand that, but I will speak to him and see what, will come of that. Yeah, Randy, could you, you know, enlighten the, the full board of what he is exactly looking for? So when another subdivision comes in. Uh... Basically, he wants every aspect of the construction documented. So when somebody buries a water line, he wants to know exactly how far under the ground it is. Uh, any junctions, you know, fire hydrants, stuff like that. How are they uh, how was the concrete put in the ground? All that stuff. Well, it, certainly the, the water, they, the town of Hadley Water Department monitors the water installation and they should have all of that information. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's a, a, a lot of stuff that, you know, we've got 
local people that we all know are building these roads and we know the quality of their work. So they, we should be able to assume for the most part that they built it according to plan. And my biggest thing was always understanding, okay, does the drainage work is the big thing. You know, the water obviously flows because people have it in their houses, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so if the drainage structures work and uh, the piping that connects everything is, is functioning, then that should be more than adequate. But he, he can't, he came from a different place where things were done differently. So. But correct me if I'm wrong. And maybe, I don't know if it's you, Randy or Bill or someone is he changing the standards from when this was installed? I mean, I, I don't think that would stand up in a court of law, would it, to say- You're right, Mark. That you have to give me something that you weren't informed of when you built it. You can't change the rules at that point, you know? Right. The implication yeah, I hear, is that I hear there what is a, some, something from the state about what you have to have to document eligibility for chapter 90 money. Okay. Although, and if we're, that's what we're supposed to have, that's what we should have. But um, we've had um, not had a lot of success in actually pinning down what, where that is spelled out. So, um, so yes, you're, you, you, you Put your finger on the problem. It's what do you mean, Bill? Where it's spelled out? You mean in state law? And, and if there's if there is a mass DOT regulation that we should know about, I would like to know about it. About well, what couldn't our happened. lawyer tell us? Um, <laughs> we have been unable to get to exactly the, the exact citation. Um, and this maybe it doesn't maybe the reason you can't get to it is it doesn't exist it would haven't found it yet um, this is something that will have to be taken up probably at a higher level uh, I know that um, the select board had uh, had, had been a, oh, made aware of this uh, as an issue and uh, that we may need to have a summit and decide how we're going to proceed. It seems, it, it seems unreasonable to hold a developer. I mean, if we're in a spot where, and I, I don't know the story here, but if, if, it, you know, if that chapter 90 regulation has been in place for all this time, but past DPW directors have not, demanded it, I would think that there would be case law that would say it's expected, it's not, it's expected to be exempted by the town if that's what we've been doing all along until told otherwise. And it seems like if anyone should take a, take the hit or the risk here, well, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I'll quiet my opinion. <laughs> All right. Well, I've, I've got to speak. So, well, it was, it was the pre, just it was the previous select board that hired the uh, DPW chief. Let's be, make that clear, okay? <laughs> well, anyhow, I've got to see the DPW director to discuss this. If something comes up that I can share or have him share with you guys, I will certainly do that. We'd yeah, appreciate because, it okay. if it's necessary to include it in our subdivision regulations. We'll do it. Right. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like a plan. All right, that's all I have for tonight, folks. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Randy. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next up, we have Robert Grimaldi. How are you doing tonight? Good. Thank you for uh, taking your time out and letting us present this evening. Um, what, are you, what are you talking about? I was going to say, Mr. Dwyer, what should I uh, bring up? I, I, do you have I'd anything? Like to start off by background okay who are you representing and what uh, are you going to show us you, you got it and um, address address always helps 355 russell street i'm sorry 335 russell street at least that's what we have from our uh real estate team 
And there's actually seems to be some question about that. This is the uh, excuse old, me. Who are you with? I'm Robert Grimaldi from G141 Architecture. My client is um, Popeye's Chicken, and it's the local franchisee for this area. And we are discussing this evening the existing defunct KFC chicken. Oh, if it's if it's Popeye's Fried Chicken, I want to waive site plan approval. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, if you know where the building is, um, am I allowed to share anything? Yes, go ahead. Because I can get you up the Google Earth. Um, here we go. I would have thought that would be a South Maple, but address. I think so. Well, yeah, I, I would agree with you that it sounds like it makes sense because our door is facing that. Um, but all contracted paperwork that the real estate team has received and in turn forwarded to me, all is listing as 335 Russell. But I believe it's a single parcel. That's that all parcel. The, um, yeah, it's Kenton. This this is old Google Earth because this LL Bean Five Guys and the, these buildings have changed. And so these three buildings and the KFC, they, I believe, are all, and of course, that just went out. Um, they, I believe, are all one parcel. Um, and hence why that's the, as soon as my computer would like to contact Google again, um, they, I believe, that, that in turn is why it's that address and not the South Maple. Um, well, Google just froze. So um, I'm going to switch over to the elevation of our proposals. Can you see that now? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, we are not changing the footprint of the building. Um, we are obviously changing the finish of the building. Um, our intent is to basically maintain the overall height with the only exception of the um, bump up at the drive through window and at the non drive through window where the brick uh, element is. Um, our finishes have all been, will be up to date to the uh, Popeye's updated corporate standards. I also have one second, I will uh, bring up the rendering that I submitted um, to you, gentlemen. One second. I have two very large rolls of plans. Oh, yeah, and the full set of construction documents, but I didn't think we're going to bring those up right now. Um, this is the rendered elevation. Um, on the bottom is photographs of the prototype building this is a you know those are photographs of out of the ground building um with the new footprint and everything as it stands this is the rendering of the front face that would be facing sale uh maple and this would be the drive-through elevation which the majority of the building is ephus um the drive-through element is all brick. The element at the front is a Nietzscheha panel, similar to uh, other sedimentaceous uh, concrete mixed base panels. Um, it wears very well. Um, all new storefront systems and all new coping, everything getting updated and redone. What is the aquamarine that looks like giant shutters? They are indeed that giant shutters it is a uh, part of the whole louisiana uh idea of you know bourbon street with the old french quarter buildings with all the shutters on it and such of that nature and they're still carrying that through on older versions of popeyes they used to have an old a section that would have an actual aluminum but you know raw uh raw raw metal um canopy that would look like a balcony from the same time and place in New Orleans. 
but everything on the outside of the building that was there as KFC will be stripped and redone. And, you know, the, the guts of the building internally will also be changed, but the footprint will not. Um, the cooler box in the back, um, that will be removed and replaced with a new and kind, but in kind, in shape and space, um, you know, just new. Um, so we're looking at this as just a renovation, not, you know, not, not a, hopefully, uh, nothing to do that's changing the square, uh, the, uh, kicking us into any type of a site plan issue. No. The signage on this thing, you've got, there's, there appears to be signs all over the place. Well, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, so there's the one on the front of the building that faces Maple, and that is 32 and a half feet, uh, 32 and a half square feet. Um, I already had a, a brief conversation with Mr. Dwyer on this. On the right and left side, we have two additional 36 diameter uh, medallions, as they call them, and they're 7.01 square feet. And then there, this is their new branded element, the love that chicken element, which kicks us over the square footage. Uh, and that's 93 square feet on its own. Okay. The, um, number, the number of signs is fine. The square footage is too large. So I love that chicken a little bit less. And um, in discussing that, now, if we get there, now we have 32, let's just round that off to 33 feet, and we have two seven square feet signs. So we're at 47 square feet, and we're at, you have a, a maximum of 64, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, if we, if there is a possibility of making a motion that, uh, you could approve our signage as long as we adjust it, that the square footage would not go over the 64 square feet. Um, we, we have to actually go back to corporate probably to get some approval for that or let me know. And, you know, at the moment we'll take off the love that chicken. And if corporate pushes us, we'll come back and file just for that variance. But we'd prefer to have the square footage, but you you let me know which one you'd prefer we go with. Well, you can only file for a variance if there's a, uh, what's what's the word, uh, Jimmy? Hardship. Hardship, yeah, hardship. And uh, I don't think uh, you're there yet. Not even close. Understood. So uh, can we, uh, if there was a possibility, if, if, if it was the board's liking to approve us tonight, could we go with the, that we will not exceed the 64 square feet? I don't, I don't have a problem with that. What about and you guys? The reason I would also say that is because my 32.5 square feet and my seven square foot, these are based upon the standard corporate signs, which you don't allow because they're internally illuminated. And we've done this in at least one or two locations where we did have to switch it out to the halo signs, but the square footage slightly changes and it, it slightly changes on the larger size um, just because of how they have to do the backing and the edge to let the uh, halo surround. So like that 32.5 may end up being 33.25. Um, so if you could give us the grace of allowing us that we won't go over in square footage because we're going to actually have to get the new shop drawings with the halo details on it which again will slightly adjust these square footages but i think it will be an approvable situation as long as we could go with the bulk square footage could you come back at our next meeting with adjusted sign square footage because if we give you a waiver there's no appeal period so that if you get Popeyes to approve whatever you need to get them to approve. We could appeal, we could give you an approval that night and you could apply for the billing permit the next day if you were so inclined. Well, let me ask this. I, I also do have a representative of, Pop, of uh, the Popeyes franchisee on the phone, on 
the meeting with us. Um, Ed, uh, if we could uh, take off the love that chicken right now, uh, are you suggesting that if we take that off, which will put us down into the square footage, could we get approval so then we could file? It, well, that makes the issue like you're going to come back with it. I mean, this is all Navy rehash for those youngins on the board. Uh, and Jim is probably right. We want to see exactly what we're getting before we make the approval. And uh, unless somebody else has a different idea. Well, and the only reason I brought up the bulk square footage because the last uh, present presenter basically suggested that that's where I got the idea from that he would be under the 64 square feet that was permissible. So are you proposing that you're going to pull the love that chicken from this proposal for, for now? Our concern right now is we want to try to rehab this building so it's not sitting like an eyesore. And so this is right now getting this approval will allow us to continue our filing of the building permit. Okay. We can do something a little bit different. We can give you approval of the building refaciding and eliminate the signs entirely right now. We will not give you any approval for the signs. That way you could go and start your rehabbing of the exteriors and interiors, whatever else you want to do. And you could, you could come back to us in two weeks with signage. That would be wonderful. Would that be all right? That would be fantastic, sir. Okay. So we'll give you... We'll waive site plan approval for the refaciding of we we have nothing to do with the inside. That's a building permit, building inspector issue. We're only concerned of, as long as you're in the same square footprint, yeah, same square footage for the footprint. We'll give you we will consider waiving site plan approval for the exterior and come back. We won't approve any signs tonight. Let me ask you this: Could we come back in a month because? As I said, I'm going to have to get the sign manufacturer to redo his shop drawings. That's fine. I mean, a month, a month is fine. Six weeks is fine, because you won't get, you won't be able to put up any signs till we approve them. So, I mean, whatever works for you on the signage is okay with us. No, that would be fantastic. I really love your uh, that you're working with us on that, because um, that that will get us to um, allow Mr. Dwyer to we could proceed with him to get the building uh, started in review and start the rest of the process. Is that correct, Mr. Dwyer? Uh, I'm, I'm part of the planning board, not building department. Yeah. Oh, well, no, but it'll be released from you. Yes, that's what we're doing now. Okay, and that, that, that's, that's what we need. The re we need this release so that we can continue with the building, yes. Okay. Yeah, so I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval for the exterior, not to include signage at this time. Second. Yeah. Okay. Now you'll come back at a future date for the signage. That's fine. That's perfect. Thank you very much. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any nays? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you for your time. I will get that. I will get an email out to the building inspector for this tonight, and you can go and see him tomorrow. Thank you very much. And just to let you know, I enjoyed your conversation about the Red Sox and the uh, rookies uh, earlier in the meeting. <laughs> okay. Thank very you. Good. good luck. Take care. Appreciate it. Thank you for your time. And if you want to stop sharing, that would be yeah. good. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. I have Tim uh, Zhang. Mike is starting to, his mouth is watering with all the Popeyes signage. Tell you what, it beats churches hand down. <laughs> All right, who's next, Mr. Dwyer? Tim Zhang. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Yes, that's Tim Zhang. Okay, you're okay. up. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Tim Zhang from Kimley Horn, representing Target, seeking uh, administrative approval of the Target Tribe Up expansion at um, 30, 367 Russell Street. I was before the board on April 20th and received three primary points of feedback that I'll go into tonight. Uh, let me share my screen. 
Let me know when you guys can see my screen. Yeah. Can everyone see? Yes. All right. So the first point of feedback that I got was that the the beacons that we were proposed cannot be eliminated. So we switch the solar panel design with a non-solar panel design. So it's going to be just a beacon without any eternal illumination. And these beacons will be located on the two uh, nor plan north and south edges of the drive up stalls. So it's one here and there's one down here. The second point we point of feedback that we got was to add a walkway between the stalls. So we decreased the stall sizes to 16 by nine and have a four foot wide walkway down the middle for uh, pedestrian and employee safety. And the third point that we received was that we should add a parking table to the plans, which we have. Um, we have a two to one ratio or more than a two, two to one ratio for the um, parking square footage. With that, does uh, anyone have any questions? No, the only question is, can you forward a copy of this to planning at havemma.org? Yes, I believe I sent it to Bill. If I didn't, um, I can send it tonight as well. Okay, yeah, please do. I've uh, got a lot of stuff in my box. <laughs> no worries. I'll send it one more time. Okay. I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval for this proposal. Okay. Second. Motion, motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, quick question. Will I have a written approval or where would I get that? Um, when Mr. When you get the email and Mr. Dwyer circles it around, mm -hmm. I will include you on the email that I sent to the building inspector informing him that we are waiving for the site plan approval and you'll be all set. All right. Perfect. Thank you guys so much and have a good yeah, night. You should, you should have that by tomorrow sometime. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next person in was Mark K. I'm here for the Hadley Garage, 97 Russell Street. Okay. Anybody else here for general information? Uh, let's see. Next one was Nausea Blackshear. I'm just here on behalf of the Reminder publication. Okay. Uh, then we have uh, Rob Baranowski, Lionel DeForge. Uh, Mike Stowes. They are all muted. Yes. Are, any Mike, are, are you here for <laughs> information? Uh, this is Rob Aronowski. I'm here for comments on conservation committee. Okay, that'll be a while. Okay. Uh, Nausea Blackshear, any, are you here for a specific issue? No, they just wanted me to cover it for the uh, Hadley Amherst edition. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Lionel. Uh, he's probably on the Conservation Commission as well. Okay. Uh, Mike Stowes is a builder. I don't know if, what project he is here for. Um, and uh, then we had uh, Jeff Squire. I believe he's here for the Heavy Garage. 
Okay. All right. Then um, before we get um we also had the uh, meeting with the happy housing and economic development working group i think that's what amy is here for uh molly keegan was here <clears throat> um i guess i could take a little bit of that this is mostly just informational this is one of the groups that was set up by christian stanley when he was chair of the select board i am the hadley a planning board representative to this um, and a bit of a lot of discussion mainly about housing issues um, and I do believe I sent around to everybody um, uh, a document a housing production plan that East Hampton had had uh, prepared uh, a year or so ago um, and the couple of questions were whether we thought it was a good idea to proceed with that. Um, if, especially if we can find grant money or other, uh, other sources of payment for it. Uh, anybody have any particular thoughts one way or the other? I'll be honest, I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. So I haven't, therefore I have no comment or I can't okay. comment. It, same here, but uh, Certainly, we have to look at the sewer situation. Uh, you know, any proposed development is it going to be on a sewer, or where will it be located? The gesture in a uh, is noble on the macro side of it, but the problem is where will we put this housing? That's what we want to make sure that we don't blindside the neighbors, the neighborhood, or anyone. So uh, that's the difficult part. So that's, well, you know, we, we couldn't get an over 55 development, a new one in on the Dion property. Uh, and clearly something off of route nine would be appropriate for this type of development because that's where you've got buses. Right, so I, I think that is the goal of having a house. Well, there are two goals to having a housing plan. One is not an issue for us uh, because we are over the 10%. But if you're a community that is under the 10%, but you have a housing plan that provides protection for you from an unfriendly 40B, not as much protection as having 13%, but nevertheless protection. But also to your point, Joe, having a housing plan uh, does give you the, um, um, does answer some of those questions. You know, where is the, what, what what are the uh, oh. available sites on sewer? What are the issues off sewer? So um, I don't know if Ken has any input on, um, I tried to send you the housing plan as well. Your uh, PVPC hmm. servers did not accept it because of its size. Well, a certain 12 step plan that a uh, program that I'm familiar with has a saying that if you wanna make God laugh, tell them what your plans are. Well, one, one of the things we have to do is that over the, by the end of about 15 years, there will be, unless we do something with the existing affordable units, we will be under the 10%. So we need to plan for that accordingly. You know, we had a long range plan, which the, the, the state stipulates that we have to do. Uh, how many people have take, pulled that thing out in the last uh, two months and take a look at it? Anybody? Yeah, I was in there. How we, we doing? You have? Good, good. Huh? Anybody else? How are we doing on that long range plan, uh, Jim? So that <laughs> does have a housing chapter, but um, as, as with so many things, uh, a housing chapter in the long range plan is not what the various state alphabet agencies are looking for uh, when they say a housing plan. Well, not to coin a phrase, they're certainly housing not production. user friendly, are they? So, uh, uh, so the idea is, uh, Ken, do you happen to know, I, I know you did work on a housing survey for Hadley, mm -hmm. which I also sent around. Um, 
do you know how much work is involved in a housing plan and whether there is what, what sources of funding may be available? Sure. So I'm actually working on two housing production plans um, for the towns of Southampton and East Longmeadow. And um, this is being funded through uh, district local technical assistance. So through a DLTA um, request and those are annually. So similar to the way that it helped fund the um, analysis of affordable housing, uh, presumably if the town were to provide or to request um, services in the form of a housing production plan um, when when that solicitation goes out in the new year um, you know that's some that that's a that's a type of project that could help fund that um, so as bill said it's a very prescribed plan um, the Department of Housing and Community Development actually has to um, approve it um, similar to an open space plan, um, you know, there's a housing needs analysis. It provides your current demographics. Um, it provides the constraints to housing. Um, Joe brought up the point about um, the, the capacity of infrastructure. That definitely is something that happens within the conversation. It's a planning process. Um, and it is something that will allow um, the town, if it has a um, approved um, housing production plan, yes, it will um, stave away the, the unfriendly 40 Bs, but at the same time, there are um, funding opportunities for other types of priorities that may have been defined in the master plan and the housing production plan that could be funded through another state source of funding. Ken, let's talk about Southampton sure. and, the use, and the usefulness of a plan for a situation like that. Isn't there affordable housing about 1% or less? It is. You're right. It, it is planned together. Uh, and do you think in 15 years, their affordable housing is going to be over 10%? No, because nobody is going to want to live there because you can't even get there from here, basically. So you see the ludicrousness of this uh, whole effort. There is. I mean, So one of the goals of the housing production plan is to, to create a set of goals for the community, whether or not that is to explore zoning changes, which you've identified in your master plan um, with regards to housing or um, identifying um, me methods for preserving housing um, and maybe shifting those to an affordable um, unit. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, the, the Southampton sought to get a housing production plan because they wanted to have the opportunity to apply for housing choice funds to support some of the other things that they have identified in their community. This is basically a CYA, right? It, yeah, I think, you know, with regards to having your open space plan up to date, a housing production plan for a community which allows the community to go through a planning process every five years um, to see where they are in housing. I, I think, you know, Jim and, and the, the board is aware of the, ex, the sunsetting of maybe some units in a couple of years that may put you under the 10%. And it, it may, you know, it may be just a continuous conversation for the next five, 10 years. But at the same time, this is a process that will A, allow you to address affordable housing, and also um, keep away some of the un unfriendly 40Bs that may be looking for a place to um, build. Not saying that right now you are, you know, in that, in that uh, category. And then C also opens up other opportunities for funding for other priorities. See, Mike, I think, I think you actually made the point perfectly that, yes, for Southampton, where so for Southampton or uh, Plainfield, uh, they don't meet the standards, but no one wants to go there. We fortunately do meet the standards, but we are also a very attractive location. So sure. I think it's more than CYA. I think sure. uh, it's kind of uh, laying in a few extra weapons in the arsenal before. Uh, I agree. I agree. But this just my point is simply that requiring towns to do this when there is 
there was really no need for it because of the possible probability that people aren't going to move there anyway. It's just a waste of tax dollars. It's a waste yeah. of tax dollars. It's another state mandate. And uh, that's well, all I got to say on that subject. It's a state <laughs> mandate and it may be a waste of tax dollars, but it, uh, we're more we're much closer to being in the bullseye than South. Oh, I agree. I agree with that. But my yep. point is too bad that the state again uses buckshot to get to, to uh, get what has to be done in certain areas. OK, Ken, Ken, just from a planning perspective, uh, we know there's only two communities, three communities in Happy Valley. Uh, Amherst probably is going to go over 10 percent. They were under 10 percent. Northampton is just getting to 10%, but every other community in Happy Valley here hasn't even come close to 10%. Yet there is no sanction against that. We threaten the town with a 40B, but it hasn't happened. And part of it is due to the fact Leverett, Shutesbury, Pelham, Plainfield, these people want to build a hundred units, 50 units. They don't want two or three units. And if you don't have a sewer system, you can't build it. Sunderland now is building more units and they're trying to put in their own sewer system. And that eventually is going to fail. So they're going to have to put in a sewer line. Uh, it's, yep. it's not easy. It's easy to plan in, but you need the infrastructure to support this. Okay, well, I think that what Ken has given us is that that if we can tap into the DLTA, the District Local Technical Assistance, and develop a housing production plan with no um, extra cost to the community, um, I think it's probably worth putting on the list of things to do. What, why, do we, why do we need it? Because in 10 to 15, in about a power craft, like I said before, in about 15 years, unless we do something happens, we're gonna be under 10% because the housing units, they're gonna drop off to be affordable. We want well, to be it, ahead it, of I the- think It's gonna take longer than 10 or 15% because these, uh, we have an average of between 10 and 12 houses built in the last. No, no, that's not it, Joe. I'm I talking know, about. We're going to come off, but this is one of the things you don't want me to talk about. One of them is going to come off, but we have affordable housing trust fund that they can be bought off more or less, not to go to market rate, to stay at 40B. And that happened in Amherst. That happened in Hadley. There was a water main on Mountain View, a water main leak on Mountain View Apartments. And who was supposed to repair it? Was the developer, the original developers long gone. The town repaired it, but they only got three years extension on the 40B. They should Well, that was a poorly negotiated deal on, be, on behalf of Hadley. They should have done better and they did. It exactly should have been better, Mike. You're right. But however, whether they should or should not have, that's what happened. We've got to deal with the facts that we have at hand. And you're absolutely right, Joe. My, my comment was, unless we do something, these are going to drop off. And that includes using something to buy into these agreements to extend them. I didn't say it was guaranteed to happen. I said it could happen. That's Okay, okay we need well, to plan on both ends. What can we do to extend it? Can we extend it? And if we can't extend it, we need to have a plan to address the long term. Well, well, let's just talk about extending. You can't allow one person, in this case, the uh, uh, town administrator, to negotiate solely and tell them what to do. Okay, we were blindsided by that one. Oh, we don't well, tell town administrator what to do. So that, well, that's we tell everybody else what to do. Um, Yeah. Okay. So I'll make a motion to investigate um, funding options for a housing production plan. Second that. Yeah. That that's something PVPC could do, Ken. Or 
Yeah. So again, you know, um, I'm sure the board is familiar with district local technical assistance that helped fund it, your update to the master plan to a, a certain extent. It has done some other projects for okay. you um, most recently that um, I, for, I forgot to say that there's this new line of grant funding that did close um, at the beginning of June. Um, it was called community planning grants. Um, and it's from 25 to 75,000 for master plans, housing production plans, whatever. Um, and those um, could could support that. I'm assuming that by next year also, that could be an opportunity for funding. Okay, what's that called, Ken? Community what grants? Community planning grants. And that's under the uh, one stop, um, I for, always forget the, the, the name of it, the one stop um, grant program. Okay, so I'll amend my motion to, investi to, to investigate grant funding options for a housing production plan. Okay, I will still second that. Okay, I mean, if this is not something we have to do today, but it's something we should be looking at over the next six to 12 months. I and believe there is a plan to have a conversation with the select board tomorrow night. Okay. Along the same lines. Okay, that's and fine. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Ken, just a quick question. You're only doing these now for Southampton and East Long Meadow? Um, they requested it through the District Local Technical Assistance um, Program. How, so many, was... how many other communities under your purview are in the type of jeopardy that you say they are? Well, again, I think it's it's reflecting on the needs that were identified by the community. I'm not, you know, going to say that they needed that. Um, we're providing, you know, the the service of of making creating these plans based on the um, prescription that is provided by the state. Um, but we have done in the past. I think, as Jim, uh, as Bill shared. East Hampton, we didn't, we didn't do East Hampton, but we've done West Springfields, we've done um, Hatfield. Um, so there have, in the Valley, we've been doing them, um, but at usually at the request of the town through the district local technical assistance. Okay. So the second piece uh, that came out of the Housing and Economic Development Working Group was to uh, start a discussion of merging the Community Preservation Act affordable housing set aside into the Happy Affordable Housing Trust Fund. And How is that even, what, what, do you, what do they mean by merge? Well, since we have a housing, affordable housing trust fund. In place now. In place. That, it's part of the statutory setup for it. It has authority to basically take over that piece of the CPA. Okay. And it becomes part of the one pot that we have. We do have to file an extra report with, uh, I guess, DHCD. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're audited annually anyway, the town as a whole. So <clears throat> that's not going to be a, uh, any issue. And it then it gives sort of a one-stop shop uh, right now, as far as I know, the affordable housing set aside has never been tapped by CPA because they've had no projects that um, qualify. Why do we have to merge then right now? What's the urgency of merging? I know. Uh, the urgency of merging is that if we don't start talking about it, the CPA only meets two or three times a year. So uh, is there an urgency? No, but if we don't start talking about it and maybe check off a block now, uh, we won't be ready when they do pop a meeting uh, two weeks before the special fall town meeting, for example. Is, is the CPA subject to uh, uh, any type of political pressure in town? Was the CPA, anything the CPA approves, must go before the town meeting. Uh-huh. Right. 
So this well, is exempted to, from going to the town meeting if it goes to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund? That well, is correct. It there's, a there's a couple, couple of things here. I believe the CPA money has a, a few different requirements as compared to the Affordable Housing Trust in addition or different, let's just say different on some things. So we're going to be very careful that they're not one fund. Well, they from what still, I've heard, excuse me, go ahead. There are two separate funds. CPA money would still need to go anything to town meeting to approve. And we've got to be careful that if we, that if, I, mean, I have no problem with the, I think the Affordable Housing Trust is the right place for this merger, if you would. But the CPA money has different requirements, I believe. And it needs town meeting approval to expend. Affordable housing trust money um, also requires either board of selectmen approval or town meeting. The affordable housing trustees cannot expend more than about $10,000 a year on certain things. They do not have authority to borrow or to expend, let's say, 50 grand out of the fund. Well, the, be the beauty of the trust fund is that it's not subject to political pressure. And I think we should keep it as far away as possible from CPA funds. That's my opinion. Why, why are we making the decision for the CPA? We're not. I don't think so. I think. Uh, what, are we, I think what are we doing in this discussion? This, so this is a preliminary discussion of whether it's a good idea. Um, I think you got to talk to the CPA first. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think <laughs> frankly, that the money the trust fund has is burning a hole in somebody's pocket, as my mother used what, to say. I, no. What I'm talking here is we would not, the, the, afford, the trustees of the Affordable Housing Trust would not be expending the money directly. They would investigate okay, let's say we want to do this, this project wants to get done and we need X amount of money and it qualifies for both CPA and affordable housing trust, but neither fund alone has enough money. So the trustee would find the place to expend the money and then use the appropriate, recommend the appropriate funds to expend that money from. Is that what they're basically being proposed, Bill? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, really. Not, not even that far advanced. The, the question, yeah, the operation of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund uh, does have its limits that we went over it at, in great detail. But the, the, the issue here is just whether we want, to, we want to take advantage of that option that the law gives us to basically take control of the affordable housing set aside. So there are not two boards uh, waiting around in affordable housing money issues. Uh, we didn't like it when we had the uh, long range plan implementation committee acting as a shadow planning board. Um, and I don't know if, um, First of all, the Community Preservation Act committee is doing fine at what they're doing, but they've never touched this component. Um, nothing has come up, apparently. And going forward, uh, they can't touch our affordable housing trust fund money, but we do have statutory authority to absorb with their agreement, with the select board's agreement, the affordable housing component and um, then all, everything's in one place uh, with a group of people who are better versed in the ins and outs of affordable housing trust funds and affordable housing funding. For these people, Bill? Us as the affordable housing trust fund trustees. So so the CPA would we would they would still need town meeting approval to expend the CPA funds. Yes, correct. So it would take you know again this is preliminary. So what I it would take is a proposal request to CPA to transfer the affordable housing set aside to the affordable uh, housing 
trust fund. That would then presumably need to be reviewed by town council. Uh, it would need the select board support and it would need town meeting support. Well, the word merger, I think is not accurate. It's yeah, not I, really a merger. Uh, I would think that I could certainly support the CPA affordable housing money coming to the trust fund as a donation to the trust fund, not as a merger of the two. Okay, I can support that. Yeah, I, I don't think the affordable housing trust fund, I'm, I'm not, I'm still not quite sure what this means. I'll be honest. My idea is that there's two separate funds, CPA set aside and affordable housing trust. If we want to, and this trustees would find the appropriate project to expend it on, and then go back to either the board of selectmen or town meeting for CPA and get approval to expend accordingly. Is that correct? Yes, yes, that is. Well, what, what not really. Not, no, yeah. you're, you're telling the CPA what they should do. Well, you're not if, factoring in is the time factor. I understand the time factor, right? That makes a big yep. difference. So we would we would have the authority to, well, no matter what, with CPA funds, you still need town meeting or special town meeting approval. So that's only gonna be twice a year. Right. What if the CPA, we like the idea, the CPA doesn't like the idea. They're an autonomous board, autonomous. No, no board. not if not if the funds are transferred to the affordable housing trust fund. Exactly. As well. a donation, can they could they That's make a donation of their funds to the affordable project. housing trust fund bill? We don't know the project. At least the CPA should know if it's a legitimate project rather than just getting rid of one third of their budget. Because a, that may be, be a, that may be a discussion they want to have. I, I would rather call it a transfer, Mike. We don't have to get into the donative intent. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can see the trustees coming up with the appropriate project for these funds, whatever it might be. Correct. However, I don't see the advantage of the money coming into the affordable housing trust for the simple reason that it needs town meeting approval. That's going to happen twice a year. The CPA would meet before either of these to make that recommendation. The planning, the board of the trustees of the fund of this of the trust would simply come up with a proposal. This money could be used for this. This much comes out of this pocket. This much comes out of this pocket. What kind of money are we talking about? What? What kind of money are we talking about coming as a donation? Is it a couple hundred thousand? Is it a half a million? Is it 50,000? don't remember i think it's in the um the hundreds of thousands yeah I was because it's been accumulating since the cpa it, it's it's significant created yeah. yeah no it's it it's it that has recently been added to the cpa recommendation it was not part of the original uh state law right so i guess i'm not i don't see the advantage of a merger i'll be honest with you because the plan, the board, the trustees ha have the authority to recommend spending this much money out of the fund and this much recommending this much out of CPA. They go to the CPA group before town meeting and say, hey, this is what we want to do. This is what we want to do. This is the project. This is how much we're going to spend. Can we do it? That's yeah. exactly At that true. point in time, can they contribute to the trust fund? We would never get, we would never get, well, that, that's a semantics. If the town meeting approves it, it comes out of one pocket yeah. and then it comes out of the other pocket and it goes to the project. So whether, whether it's in one fund or on a two separate, whether you write one check or two checks, essentially it comes out of two different pockets. Well, there's a certain ledger item that says affordable housing trust fund. And even it's the same, it's not the same pocket. It's coming out of different accounts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, so that's uh, for that. At present, for example, when you're doing um, when uh, we're doing the town's share of an APR purchase, 
part of it comes from CPA, part of it comes from the Conservation Commission's um, uh, where we the from, the where the money from the transfer of development rights. Um, so yeah, it's, it's basically two checks being written. Yeah, I, I guess I'm, I'm not quite sure what the, I mean, because you still need CPA approval to actually expend the money and town meeting approval to actually take it out of the bank account. I'm not quite sure what saying the money's in our pocket does because it's not in our pocket. We need to follow those guidelines and we need town meeting approval anyway. Well, my, the purpose of me bringing up the donation to the trust fund was that it would be more palatable to me than a merger. So again, just, just to procedurally, if this were to get approved at each step along the line, at some point, CPA would be out of the affordable housing business. And Have they ever been in it? No. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, uh, so <laughs> that's the, that is the idea of having of having affordable housing money under the direction of people who have more expertise with affordable the handling of affordable housing money. So well, we've gone. I've gone to a couple seminars. I don't know if that makes me an expert, more right? More than CPA has done, <laughs> I bet. So ultimately, to your point, Jim, if if this went as sort of outlined here, there would be one vote of town meeting or one vote of the CPA to divest itself of oh. the affordable housing trust fund set aside, one vote of town meeting to expend that by transferring it from CPA to affordable housing trust fund. And then going forward after that point, there would be no need uh, CPA would no longer have a role in affordable housing matters. They would be well, on the uh, historic set aside uh, or historic preservation, open space, but they would they would they would step out of the affordable housing business, and the affordable housing trust fund would be the affordable housing. So right. to expend the money out of the affordable housing trust fund would require the trustees approval and the board of selectmen. Correct. And no longer town meeting. No longer town meeting. I mean, it's, it certainly could go to town meeting. That's an option right. if it was a big project, but yeah. if it, it would not require town meeting if the select board and the trustees were in agreement. Well, certainly if something required immediate attention, it might be a benefit, but we know that even if something demands immediate attention, it usually takes three or four months. <laughs> Jim, yeah. can I speak on this? I, I don't see any, any wolf at our door to make that decision to really take the money from the CPA. Uh, that's, their, that's their business. And if a project comes along, then we could vote for it. What they would vote for it, not the planning board giving a Mark, recommendation. So I- Mark's trying to get a word in edgewise. Can I get 60 seconds in here? I, I can be corrected, of course, but my sense was that we weren't making any decision. We were just starting a discussion and I'm hearing at least two of our members saying no. And maybe I'm wrong, but that's, I'm hearing just like, don't even want to talk about it. And I'm thinking as a, you know, as, as, as a taxpayer, here's a possibility to put more funding into some action we might have to take as Joe and Bill talked about earlier, you know, some of these actions to avoid getting to that hostile 40 B situation instead of having this money dead ended with the CPA where they haven't historically done anything with it. They're not comfortable doing it allegedly. Why not 
put it on our radar. We don't know yet how to do that, but let's at least talk about it. You know, I, let's not say I don't even want to talk about it. I don't think that's in the taxpayer's okay. best interest. Where did, this emer where did this proposal for our agenda rise from? Yeah, what, how did it come I to all? It wasn't even come up with the topic. I, yeah, I, I uh, believe the, it was uh, the Economic Housing and- Housing and Economic Development Working Group. Yeah. Was there a vote to bring it before us? I think they were going to present, but I think our, our other stuff went long-winded and we lost them. I so think, I think no, was there a vote from the Economic Development Committee to bring this before the planning board? I believe there was. No. So we don't know. The, well, we like, I said, like, I said, like I said early on, I believe the CPA has some different requirements for expending some of the monies. By putting it into the Affordable Housing Trust, <laughs> Can that even be done and waive those requirements, Bill? Uh, I, I think, don't see how. Well, I think in both cases, it would be under DHCD, uh, Department of Housing and Community Development. So it might be that not every penny of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund could be spent for the same purposes. Jim, if, if there wasn't a vote on behalf of this committee to make a proposal like there us. was a vote what was it to to bring it to to bring it forward what was the motion i michael are you are you just trying to kill I'm just, this i'm just wondering what the motion was it was, it was, it was a consensus that. it was a consensus that that sounds like a good idea yeah it was a consensus and not a vote it, it, it's irrelevant why did we why there does there need to be a motion to, to request the planning board to think about this. You I don't just want to know how it word arose. Who made the proposal? It, it, it Who arose made the proposal from the, at this committee? It arose from the Economic Commission, the plan, whatever they're called. That's who, who, fine. It had to, somebody had to talk about it. Mike, are you trying to roast someone? What's yeah, I am. Actually, I'm cares. trying to roast you. Okay. Well, I'm trying to do the taxpayers' best interest. Yeah, and if, listen, if let's talk about gentlemen. taxpayers, okay? Let's talk about taxpayers. Let's talk about the farmers in town. Okay. Yes, Mr. Chair. The, the discussion well, of... Yeah, we're, we're beating this one to death. And my, my position yeah. is that if a legitimate proposal came before the town or came before the CPA, then we would vote to merge it. And let's see what the project is rather than giving somebody a blank check to take money from the CPA fund that we haven't even heard from the CPA. So I, I would not vote in favor of this. Uh, we're not voting. We're, 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 no we're not motion. even voting tonight. That's it. Bill, put this on the next agenda. This discussion is done for tonight. OK, good. We're, we're, we could, all right. <laughs> Enough of this one. We'll be here till tomorrow. All right. With that, we will. Um, you have the garage bill? Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll reopen the public hearing on the Hadley Garage at 97 Russell Street. I believe, Mr. Squire. Sure. Thank you, everyone. Um, and appreciate your patience. Um, so we were before you. Geez, I am trying to remember the last time um, that we actually presented for you. I know. The, the one remaining item that was left outstanding was approval from uh, Mass DOT for, for the curb cuts and, and stormwater drainage to the site. Um, and we finally, after a little over a year of, of back and forth with them, uh, finally did receive a permit. Um, that permit, uh, I can share it with you if you care to see it, but we did get that permit. Um, just in the last couple of weeks, um, and that plan references you know, what, you, um, what you see here um, for, for the curb cuts and parking spaces. Um, one of the other things that we provided was just a, a summary of sort of where things landed parking space-wise. Um, there's a total of 49 spaces that are, that are available on the site. Um, with, with current tenants that they know, um, you know, there, there's an excess of 27 spaces or so that would be used for, for overflow for, um, for the adjacent business. Um, but I think, I think largely what, um, what was being asked of, 
of Mark and, and the, the applicant was just confirmation that DOT would, uh, um, would, approve the, would approve the plan. So that has been provided. Question. Yes. I have, I've seen the permit, the writing. I see obviously where they have approved the curb cuts. Yes. Where is it obvious that they've approved the drainage? It should be contained. I mean, that's, it's all, all of that was reviewed as part of this application. Where I does don't it know say whether, that? what's that? Where does it say that in this approval letter? Um, I guess I'd have to read through this in a fine tooth comb because there's a number of conditions that are associated with it. But essentially, you know, my understanding is that this, this permit approves the plan that was submitted to Mass DOT which, you know, which was this plan here that includes existing drainage and, and you know, where, where what, what facilities or infrastructure is or isn't on site. Um, and this, this plan is all part of that, that record permit. So you're saying Matt, you've persuaded Mass Highway to let you sheet flow drainage onto their right of way? Only a portion of it. It's not the entire site. The issue is that there's no, uh, no, nowhere else to go with the drainage. There is no, you know, we can't tie into to Route 9. This is all an existing condition, you know, which normally wouldn't require, um, you know, if, if this was a completely new project, new building, new, you know, new parking lot, um, you know, site plan review, this, this would certainly rise to the standards, but this is an existing building, an existing parking lot um, with, you know, without, you know, without any ability to tie into anything. Where on the drawing do you show drainage going into Route 9? The, well, like, as I said, Jim, there is, there is no drainage infrastructure on the site. It is purely sheet flow. That's... And the only, the only way that that information can be conveyed is through the contours on the plan right now, which they have, you know, they have certainly reviewed. That's been part of this process. I don't, I don't know how else we would... I want to see it either on the drawing that says the water flows on Route 9 or that the, the, the state has said it's okay to flow it on. I don't see any indication of water flowing onto Route 9 either on the plan unless you, it's just not clear to me. And, and, and I, Jeff, I mean, that was one of the things that we want to make very clear that they needed to approve the drainage. I understand. And so they reviewed this plan with the contours and all of the that information just as they would any other permit. And if they had concerns about drainage and where that was going, uh, it certainly would have come out in that review process. Yeah. This is not, you know, unlike any other, you know, DOT permit that we've applied for. If they have a concern and an issue with it, they, they would be the first to let us know. And this has been a little over a year, you know, getting this permit from them. So I, you know, I, I can certainly say with some confidence that they, they have reviewed this at, at nauseum for, for, for the level of, of um, you know, improvements that are being made. Okay. Another comment that I wanna make is over a year ago and during the pandemic and everything else, way back when we said that the original site plan approval for the coffee shop, there was to be parking, the parking was to be on site. And the parking has repeatedly been on the town common. Just this, I mean, enough said. The applicant has done nothing from what I can tell to keep the parking off of the town common against site plan approval of several years ago, period. I'm greatly so, uh, Yeah, I mean, I can't speak for, for Mark and, and the business, but my understanding is that they've been, he has certainly been to the select board, to the police department, to anybody you can to try and enforce that and, and including, you know, letting patrons know that there is no parking allowed on the common. Well, um, you, as the owner of the, the, the selectmen and the police department have little authority to prevent parking on the town common, in fact, they've even said it was okay to park on a town common. However, right. site plan approved, the original site plan approval said the parking must be on site. If anybody mm -hmm. can control the parking on site, it is the owner of the establishment. If they can't control the, their own customers, then I have little concern that they can control anything else on this site. It just has been like they're ignoring site plan approval. They, they, 
just don't cooperate with the town. He's he doesn't care. And and I, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm actually ready to well, speak Mr. now, Mr. Squire. I'm not asking That's you okay. to speak up for the owner. I think he's prepared. Well, I'm the owner. I'm prepared to speak. Um, I've done everything I'm supposed to in regards to meeting with the select board several times, the town manager, and communicated with the chief of police on several occasions in regards to the parking. My intention with this building and this parking plan that's cost extensive amounts of money to get to where we are now, and we've been working with the state for 18 months to get this plan approved, this plan has parking available that we will immediately once this is done we will safely have any overflow parking for our customers come over to this lot here which is going to obviously beautify the building and the location um, it's been it hasn't been taken care of long before i purchased the property and my intention is to make the property very nice and acceptable and have overflow parking for my customers. 18, 18 months ago, you were told there's nothing preventing you from using this parking area for your customers. However, it has not happened. I'm greatly disappointed in what has happened over the last 18 months. Repeatedly, cars parked on the common. I'm sorry you're disappointed. Like I said, I've, I've spoken to the select board and the chief of police, and I am here seeking approval for this plan that's approved by this state, and I will. Are, are, are you on site every day there, Mark? I own a restaurant in the middle of COVID and after COVID. Yes, I'm here all the time. Do you, do you, look, out every, do you look out every day to see where people are parking? Um, As the owner of the establishment, you don't need the police chief or the board of selectmen to tell your customers they can't park on a town common. They are the customers that go to your establishment. You could certainly address that with something with the customer, putting signs up, no parking on the common. You see there is there, you could tell them to move the cars. Obviously, oh, yeah. it has not been happening. There is signs on the common that tell people where not to park. Well, I think you should be calling the police and asking them to come ticket the cars. Oh, I have actually discussed that with them um, on several occasions. He, he, he could simply tell customers when he sees cars parked there, he could simply call in his restaurant and say, hey, if you're parked on a common, move your car. But he doesn't need, I don't think he needs a police of the, the police department or the board of selectmen to enforce. It would be a lot simpler and faster if he got the message out to his customers in the business. To, to pass the buck to the police department or somebody else, to me, just isn't right. They're, his, they're the customers of this establishment. Hey, Jim, this is, this is Tom Reedy. I'm working with Mark and, and Jeff on this. And you know, with all due respect, I think we, we do have to remember that it, it was a pandemic. Mark is trying. Um, it does put him in a little bit of a, a hot situation. He has gone to the select board. They've said one thing. He has gone to the police chief who said something. And, like, understanding that now we have the planning board saying get him off the common, you know, I don't want to say let's let's put that in the past and focus on the future. Um but I'm going to say let's let's put that in the past and focus on the future because I think you have a, a real solution here. And then if I hear you say, hey, maybe there's a working group or maybe Mark and, and you and, and whoever else from the planning board and the police chief and, you know, maybe a couple members of the select board sit down and, and we all talk about it. I mean, I don't think and I like how Mark had stepped in and kind of explained himself. He's he's trying and we want to make sure that we're doing right by as many people as we can. And if that, you know, ultimately means we have to get this parking on the other site to get people off the town common and then work with the town to prohibit folks to stay off the but town. Tom, we, we said we'll, that that we'll site was available. We, the, they could park there. You didn't do it. So it's not this, this newly available. It's been available for the last 18 you months. Don't need, you don't need the board of selectmen. You don't need the police department involved here. 
They are customers of this business. He can enforce it on his own. I've been to other places where you're not allowed to park next door. People don't park there because if they see the customers park there, the business tells you, hey, somebody's parked over there. Right. The license plate is such and such. Move your car because it's going to be towed or something. Because it's on, but it's on. So hold on, let's follow that example. But it's so that's next door on private property. And who owns that property? It's probably that private property owner telling that adjacent business owner, don't have your people park here. What Mark did was went to that property owner, the town, and said, what should I do? And they didn't say, don't have your people park here. We're, we're muddy in the waters here. We're still talking about site plan. This has not nothing to do. You're, according to the site plan, and it, this is going to credibility of the presenter. The credibility is he, he promised to get the automobiles off when this was originally presented 18 months ago. And it goes to the issue that there's plenty of parking here, but he chooses not to use it. And going to the select board and going to the police chief is looking, is kind of muddying our waters because we're talking about a violation of the site plan. And we're talking about a new presentation of the site plan, which would we have the trust to say you're gonna do what is presented before us? This may be a case where we are probably gonna require a bond because we do have that authority. And from Jeff Squire's point of view, Jeff, the, uh, there is the ability, you said there's no ability for the water. The uh, many, many establishments in Hadley have put in a big uh, kind of a retention pond underneath the parking. And yeah. whether it's in Lowe's or other places, there is that possibility that can be used. I, well, I just interject that I can't, I mean, we can't put something underground or on the surface because no matter what is designed, it needs a, it needs an overflow. There will be a storm that will exceed that capacity. So there needs to be an overflow for that. Any of those systems that, that are, have been designed all have an overflow. And so in this case, we can't discharge to any adjacent private property. We can't discharge to the state highway. So, you know, well, really we're, you know, and this is an existing site. So the, the standards for stormwater are substantially different than what would normally be for a new a new project. So that's a Jeff, that's is this floodplain now to uh, to do anything you want to do? No, it's we're, we're saying that we're not changing the the drainage flow at all. We are reducing the amount of impervious surface overall and trying to you know do everything that we can. We've added some additional green space, you know, up along the, the tree belt where, you know, within the state right of way um, to help absorb some of that storm water. We've added planting beds to try and, you know, absorb what we can, but we don't, we, we just, um, you know, feasibly speaking, don't have the ability to put anything um, subsurface here. But well, you it? could, you, you couldn't even, you couldn't dollar wise or just because it's impossible. It's, it's well, I mean, you, you could physically put it under there, but you need an overflow for it. it there will be well, some storm you know, as we the problem is perhaps, you know, this was a business decision you guys made and you bought the building. But, but you this didn't is an existing the problems that were kind of come along with it. And you want us to bail you out. Okay. Now, just now wait, wait a minute. We were originally told by the DPW under no circumstances should this be sheet flowed onto Route 9. And yet you're trying to tell us they've changed their attitude and they're going to allow sheet flow onto, onto Route 9. Because they recognize that there are no other options on this site. That's, oh. that's what this 18 months has been about, is understanding the curb cuts and the drainage. A okay. couple of general, couple one major comment right here. Because this, there's going to be no motion tonight to approve or disapprove anything, even conditionally, because I want to reconvene this hearing and I want to notify the abutters that it's going to be reconvened and when, because a lot of them have been waiting for something. And obviously they didn't know about it going to be on the agenda tonight. So we will, we will continue this hearing to a future date and I will take the abutters list and mail out uh, notices of when that hearing will be. Um, I also intend to contact the state people that gave you this letter and find, get from them, are you approving the sheet flow drainage onto Route 9? Because I see nothing in the letter about it. 
And if they say, we understand that and that's, a, that's uh, uh, going to continue, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But if they make a comment that we didn't know about it, there is a problem. So Jeff and Tom, <clears throat> Jim says he's seen this uh, decision. I've checked my email and I'm not seeing it. Did you send it to the planning board? I sent it to Jim earlier today, just as, yeah, I, I didn't. Oh, he didn't, it you didn't to send it to anybody else? I didn't oh. send it to everybody, no. I okay. didn't send oh, okay. it to the entire board. I didn't think that yep. was my Send position. it to planning and I will forward it. Yep. Or okay. Send, in fact, it, send. Is that uh, dilapidated send. building in the back of the property that's on some of the neighbor's property going to be torn down? Yeah, it's just yes. to be removed. Yes. So Jim, can I just, on your first point relative to the abutter, so this evening what you'll be doing is making a motion to a date certain because this has continually been continued and so it's appeared on the agenda, but I can appreciate you wanting to alert the neighbors to say, for real this time, we're going to actually have a hearing. I just want to make sure that when you continue it to that time date certain, it's a continuation of that original application and not a new application, and all you're doing is notifying the abutters no, no, this, of this, whenever this, that this next. I've, I've done this before when things have dragged on for a long time. Yep. And I said, yep. This is this is a continuation of the original public hearing. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I, 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 there, there will be there will be no notice in the newspaper, just a letter to the abutters. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. I have That's fine. Marked it in the agenda as anticipate further continuance. Yeah. So. so. So then maybe as we're on it, um, in anticipation of that next meeting, what else are you looking for from us? Just so if, if we can be as comprehensive as possible when we come back. I guess the, the biggest one is, you know, I'll contact the state. And like I said, okay. if they say it's good, it's good. Um, okay. Look for the comment. It is their, it is their road. And as far as, uh, you know, ensuring... No parking on the common. I think Joe may have it right. Some kind of a bond as opposed to withholding the building from it as well. Which is, I mean, not the I, building I, I permit. No, 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 no. Not the building permit. No, no. The certificate of occupancy. Yeah. Jimmy, can I talk when you get a chance, please? Sure. Let me know when. Go ahead. Okay. I'm to, I want to speak to the parking issue. Uh, I own a business property on Route 9 proper. Uh, I I appreciate all your talk about site plans, et cetera, et cetera. Before COVID, my neighbor, 5050 Fitness, was very busy. And on lots of days, they filled their parking lot and they would come over onto my property. So we talked to the owner and said, look, we don't want you parking over here. We need the parking for the businesses that are on our property. And it works a little bit, but it doesn't work completely. So what we have to do at that point in time is put up signs that say, if you park here, you are going to get towed. My point being, I have to take care of my property and the town needs to take care of their property. Mark can do the best he can do to keep people off of there. And unless he's standing out there 24 seven, people are gonna use that. If there's a sign up that says no parking per town, whatever, or you're gonna to be towed and they start towing cars, then it'll be a different story. So that's my two cents worth. I saw, I saw the cops ticketing cars there once and I think I saw Mark run out saying, hey, what's going on? So, uh... Mike. <laughs> whatever the case may be it's the town's property and ultimately they are responsible for it mark can do as much as he can and again i understand the rules i get it and if i have overflow parking or, or if my parking lot gets full and there's a thousand more people that want to come into the barbecue and they pull in and everything's full they have to turn around and leave. Unfortunately for Mark, people will pull out of his place and say, oh, look at all the parking that's happened over here. It looks like I can park here. 
So somehow the town's got to contribute towards this. Now, the employees, do the employer do the employees park? You talking to me or Mark? Mark, well, yeah, I'm talking to Mark. Uh, we park in designated spots at Eslon and um, at the- See, there's, a, there's an example, the employees, you, you can order them to park in a- well, Yeah, it's funny thing about them. They, they fortunately in, in this environment come to work every day that they're supposed to. So I don't always have customers that come in every day or uh, continue daily. Okay, so it's- you're not coming up with a solution. You always come up with excuses and we're looking for a solution and we're trying to help. I am, I came up with a solution, um, Joe. I have been working on this for 18 months since we contacted the state. It took that long to get a response and we have, we have the plan. We're here tonight with the plan. Mark, let me let me ask you, is there a reason why we can't now that we have DOT approval, is there a reason why we can't have employees park at this adjacent property? Is there are there any other concerns to have them park over there? Well, my employees aren't parking in uh, my employees are parking some of their cars over there. Yes. OK. OK, so they're not parking on the car. That's a different answer you gave than you gave to me. Is the south parking lot currently, is that the customer or is that customer and employee? Uh, it's uh, all customers. Both parking lots are set up for customers. So Jim, uh, two weeks or uh, Four weeks we have uh, the ideal movers, August 17th. Right. Two, two weeks is going to be two, uh, might be two, right before the 4th of, no, that's 4th of August, I'm sorry. Two weeks, maybe too soon to get all the abutters notified and let them know about it. I, I think that the 17th would work for this as well, the two public hearings on it. I won't be here in two, two weeks, which may please some members of the board. No, not me. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, to Jeff Squires before he goes, in, immediately in front of the, uh, the garage, there is no alteration to the, uh, there's just big one big opening, no curb cuts, no delineation as far as driving in, driving out. Has that been approved by the state? Yeah, so we did, um, yeah, just to share this. So, I mean, there is, there, there is gonna be markings on the road delineating, you know, entrance only or exit only this this is an exit only um yeah and they you know part of the agreement with dot would is was to enlarge these islands to the extent that we can with um you know by removing some existing asphalt um this is all you know new granite curb on these islands they don't want us to touch that so you know the resolution was to to at least remove some of that asphalt to help define those travel lanes and those um exits and entrances a little bit more clearly okay Thank you. They approved three, three, three exits, right? For three. Correct. They did. In? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, who's the peer review on this? There is no peer review. I mean, there really isn't any need to. Well, re there isn't much to I, review. <laughs> I think this may be a situation where we would need a peer review because we're going to be talking about a drainage, sophisticated drainage, sheet flow, amount of water coming up. Blah, blah, blah. I, we're not I, changing anything, though. No, I mean, that's, there's nothing to review, I guess, in, in all. Yeah. yeah I, I what just, does the rest I, of the board think about a peer review? I've got to agree that we do not, the peer review isn't going to get us anything because there's no, there's no, you're proposing no change. Right. So they're going to, the, the peer, peer review, peer review is going to say what's there is there. They're not going to bring anything to the party. They're already approved the curb cuts, so what's there? If the contention is the parking, but well, not even the parking, the parking is okay. If the contention is the sheet flow, if the state says the sheet flow is okay, it's it's their business. If they say it's not, and they need to redesign something, then that'd be a different story. 
this this is kind of an accident waiting to happen. Ice, freezing rain, ice sheet, uh, you're going downhill, somebody hits the brakes, there's ice there, you're gonna slide right into Route 9. Uh, there has to be some kind of barrier to prevent the water from just flowing out the Route 9. I, 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 I mean, Jim, I guess, I mean, it's, it, you look next door, there's no, there's no drainage next door at, at, at Esalon. Um, you know, a lot of this, this business across the street doesn't have any drainage, it's not uncommon that for a lot of the older properties like this, there isn't, you know, it always has always historically sheet flowed into into Route 9 without without an issue. If it was an issue, they would certainly let us know. So a pre-existing pre condition before zoning, even though it's it doesn't work or look good, is going to be exempt? It, I mean, it typically with DOT for them, if there's no other option, yes. And we really, we, I mean, there is no other option. You know, if, if there were if there were a connection directly into Route 9, one of the first requirements that they would have is to make us remove that. So we'll continue the hearing to August 17th, and I will notify the abutters and we'll reconvene and I'll, I'll get a hold of the person from the state, DOT. Okay, so I'll make that a sounds motion great. to continue to 8-17 at 6.45. Was that a motion, Bill? Second. What? Uh, so I made a motion, second. Oh, second, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. vote? Motion passes unanimously, okay. okay. All right, thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks, guys. Okay. What else have we got, Bill? Uh, I think uh, finally made it to Ken. Oh boy, sorry, Ken. Oh, these are um, the night of public hearings. I, that that just happens. Night of public discussion, more than anything. Pub yeah, you're right. <laughs> public discussions. <laughs> okay. Um, so I think where we left off. So I, I provided the board the um, the contract. I I pre-populated based on previous conversation, some of the tasks that maybe we could work on this this year. Um, obviously we completed the floodplain. We um, um, did the updates regarding the floodplain to the subdivision regulations, which the board can, can discuss at a future date. Um, so, you know, just ensuring that what we've, what was presented to the board, um, in that contract is good as far as like a baseline or if there are certain things you want to amend um, so that it's reflected in there. Um, but I guess that that's just one one component of this discussion um, is is the work plan for, um, you know, your your planning board assistance this upcoming year. Um, I think the other item, and I briefly spoke to Bill about um, the affordable housing pay payments in lieu of, um, I know that you were supposed to have a public hearing, but it'll be continued um, with regards to the regulations and you're still exploring that. Um, you know, um, I did, I, in, in an email to Bill, I did tell him that I was waiting for a phone call, a return phone call to um, the town of Swampscott. Um, I'm hoping that I'm pronouncing that right. I'd still mess up on, on pronunciations of, of communities in Massachusetts. Um, but they have uh, affordable housing um, trust fund that is designated that, that that group, the affordable housing trust um, actually re regulates um, how payment in lieu of fees are calculated and it's based on a, on a construction cost. And I know that's where the board kind of left off at the last discussion based on you know the, the fluidity of construction in the Valley. 
So I was trying to, you know, just get up to date with them with regards to, to possibly providing that information for you um, today, but I don't have that information. Um, and I think that's where we kind of left off at the last meeting. Um, and, and so I guess, you know, if, if this conversation is short, it's short, but um, just maybe talking through the work plan for this year um, knowing that you have public hearings coming up in the next two, you know, your next two meetings, um, but maybe working towards a product or some products. Um, so you want me to months. share the work product, work program? Yeah. Let me get that. You have it. Hope that is large enough. So this actually, um, one of the things I think that I, I took away from conversations in the past two years that have been working with you was something regarding special permits. Um, and I think that might have been from a previous um, set of scopes. Um, and then it was this discussion of off street parking um, that the parking ratios that I know prior to floodplain Prior to dealing with the definitions, we had a conversation that I thought was, you know, very uh, productive, um, and maybe the board still wants to explore it. But I think you, it stemmed from a development application that was coming in for storage units, um, and the board, you know, I think when the applicant was presenting, uh, suggested as such that there may be too many parking spaces for that particular use. And so I think it's probably worthwhile having a discussion about off-street parking um, and parking minimums and, and requirements could be something that the board is, could be looking at. And I know that the previous discussion, that's definitely something that uh, may be helpful to the board. Um, master plan implementation, I think that you know, to address um, Mike's point with regards to the housing production plan, the, the idea is that the planning board uh, may be the lead on some of the ideas that have come through the master plan process, maybe taking a look at that and maybe attacking some of the prior the initiatives or priorities that the planning board or the other committees within town have identified for the planning board. Um, that's just something that can be addressed. It doesn't necessarily have to be you know, drop everything and do that. We put, um, and then I know that we were trying to work on planning board rules, regulations, and policies, and incorporating all of the various rules um, that you may have, um, and putting into one place. And um, you know, from the affordable housing to the now stormwater to the, the other ones that I, I feel like I have this document at my desk in the office that is just piecemeal um, of some of the Hadley um, planning board rules and regulations and just trying to incorporate um, those into one document. And then some you of know, that being available for out, we already... Bill, go again. Some of that is just writing down what we already are doing. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a uh, we have some procedures. Uh, tell a, an applicant at each meeting that uh, when they file new, they, they also have to get a arrange for a peer review. It's sort of covered in the bylaw, but uh, not really in the regulations. Uh, it'd be good to just have those things there so that we didn't have to spend time just repeating ourselves. Yeah, I think, you know, to address that too, something that some other planning boards do and are starting to move towards that. And we we did that with the with the bylaw that was created for stormwater is having most of the stuff in the regulations. So you don't have to go through a process of approving a bylaw to change, you know, four sentences about maybe deliverables that are required for an application. Um, that may be existing in your bylaw, but now you can just address that in a regulation, um, like what is expected for a site plan application, five, you know, 
um, full size copies and you know you you send it to these various departments um, that doesn't need to be spelled out in the bylaw um, but those, it's just those types of things maybe even setting up how the planning board um, runs its meetings that's sometimes it's um, how it's found and it, it's usually found in the rules and regs that could be something that the board wants to do um, but you're right it, it also is is documenting those procedures for the purposes of ease for the applicant you know they, they'll know what to expect and um, know what to do okay yeah okay that all looks fine Kim I will make a moment, a motion to authorize the chairman to sign the contract. I would second it. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay, so I'll sign this, Ken. Is this the latest one? This, this is, is the latest one, yeah. This is what you passed around? Yeah. Okay, I will sign it and get... Uh, Get three. Get it to the uh, town accountant, who will need to uh, sign it as well, and then get it back to you. Awesome. Very good. So I Just guess go. you know one of the things to for the next meeting, the next time we meet, um, is there maybe something that you want to for me to be looking at? I think maybe the affordable housing. Uh, continue to share resources with regards to that. Um, and maybe that's our next conversation or who want me to work on, you know, something else that you may be looking at. <clears throat> Ken, uh, did you hear part of our conversation re regarding subdivision regulations and the inability to get a subdivision road approved by town meeting because the DPW director thinks there should be more added? Do you have any insight in something like that? I can take a look at your rules, uh, your subdivision regulations, you know, PVPC. I know that Larry Smith worked on yours uh, not so long ago. Yeah, but well, the, the, big, the big problem at that time was releasing infection. the last lot. In other words, once the uh, subdivision road was completed and fulfilled to our expectation, we were required to release the last lot. But uh, now, we don't release the last lot until it's accepted by the town meeting. And, uh, but there seems to be a bit of a hang up between our as built plans as we require and mm -hmm. what the DPW director thinks is necessary. So maybe you have some insight in how to resolve it, or maybe you don't. I, it's just a thought. It, it might there might be some some conflicts between the uh, payment and lieu regs. Okay. So I don't know if that is anything. Um, would you be able to kind of just drop in in two weeks? Yeah, sure. And I've got another question I was going to ask you earlier. Are you, Ken, are you aware of any other communities that have a uh, affordable housing trust and a CPA housing allowance that they've investigated blending? I mean, is, you know, are, if we even think about that, are we completely going out on some new limb or is this something that's been done? And if so, it would just, be interesting to know. Yeah, I think I can do a little bit of research. I know that there are, there are communities in the Commonwealth and there are resources that, you know, just a quick Google search regarding okay. transferring the funds from a CPA to affordable housing trust fund. There are some resources regarding that and some communities that have done that and what the process entailed and some of the pushback that they got. Um, and so there's some, you know, some, um, well, if that's out there, I can probably Google it. Yeah. Um, but there, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of, of communities in the Valley that have done that. And I, and I can't uh, think of any, but I'm there sure aren't that many. <laughs> those discussions probably have come up. Um, mm -hmm. But the two communities that I'm working with, and we're not at the point where we're talking about goals yet, 
um, they both have CPA and affordable housing trust funds. And I feel like the conversation may be brewing. Southampton has an affordable housing trust fund? Sorry, East Longmeadow, not Southampton. They have a CPA, um, but they do not have a housing trust fund, Southampton. Thanks. That'd be good, Kenya, yeah, please. Sure. So I'll see you in two weeks. Is that? So while we're on, well, it's on my mind, I'm going to make a motion to continue the payment in lieu regulations public hearing to uh, August 3rd. Okay. Second. Third. Wait a minute. <laughs> Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right. Um, <clears throat> speaking of Megan's way, um, I did get an answer to the question about why the corner lot has two driveways. Huh? He asked the DPW for a driveway permit on Rocky Hill, uh, on Huntington, and the DPW director gave him a driveway permit for a driveway onto Huntington. Okay. Um, so I uh, did say, so there, there, there was a uh, special permit issued to allow access across other than frontage because the developer of Megan's Way wanted those corner lots to enter onto Megan's Way. And we happily gave that special permit uh, because we didn't want a bunch of driveways one after the other. Uh, as best I can determine, that special permit was never recorded in the Registry of Deeds, which would have been the developer's responsibility. And as a result, it was not uh, a um, condition on that lot. So um, it's... Uh, yeah, it's one of those catch 22s. I don't have a solution for it. Uh, I, I run by there about every other day on my, you know, on my jog and, and I don't know because I, you know, I, I don't turn around all the time, but that driveway being further east, they might feel safer being able to see further to the east because when you're right on the top at Megan's way, you're a little bit blind and, you know, they could come at you from either way. But I, I, I don't know, maybe there was a beneficial reason for safety. I'm just trying to give them the... Yeah, I, I got a feeling that what happened, this happened, it's, auto, it's, it's done and we probably don't have much of a control over it at this point in time. Right. However, what can we do and learn from our mistakes here? Well, I, I happen to be talking to the... Uh, DPW director when he was uh, looking at the bridge on Knightley Road to be repaired. And I said, you know, if there's any question, just direct it to the planning board and, and we can help resolve it before it becomes a big issue. I, I also spoke to the DPW director and said that a second driveway for a residential lot should always be a red flag. That's not that you point. can't do it. That's the neighbor yeah. next door has two driveways, one to his far and out back and one to his garage. Correct. Um, and the bylaw doesn't say anything about that. But um, the other thing, the third level would be uh, perhaps talk to the building inspector about adding one more line to his checklist that uh, if something would have required a special permit, has that special permit been recorded at the Registry of Deeds? Hmm. So we don't really follow up on that because we don't always know, you know, people will come in, they'll ask for a special permit, but 
they sometimes choose not to exercise it. So we don't always know. I, I don't routinely look to see if permits we have issued have been recorded. But uh, especially with that rash of uh, uh, accessory apartments we approved earlier in the uh, spring, um, we'd want to be sure that those all got recorded. Or the building inspector would want to be sure they got recorded because that is a condition of the special permit. So is there no specified responsible party for the filing? Uh, it's the obligation is on the applicant to record it. Oh. And it says so in the decision. But, uh, if you read that far, I guess. But there's no mechanism for us um, to, to double check that they've, that they've filed it. Well, the thing is, we don't know always. If it isn't filed, we don't know what that means. Hmm. Um, I suppose unless we're sure that so, well, so they're, they're building their accessory apartment and they haven't hmm. filed it. Uh, that should be a flag, but then, you know, we don't know when they apply for a building permit necessarily, uh, or what that building permit actually is for. So yeah, there is not a mechanism. We, we probably, um, uh, probably should work up a better system that the, um, building department has new permitting software. And that may be an easy, uh, easy thing to um, to build into that to the uh, the permitting system. That sounds reasonable. Okay. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll take that up with uh, uh, with Tom when he gets back from his uh, his summer vacation. Mm. What else have we got, Bill? Uh, so I put on the uh, discussion uh, regarding the Conservation Commission situation. I don't know if anybody has anything to add to it or if we want to say anything or do anything as a board. Uh, I shared with you early, all earlier today my email to the select board. Um, and I believe... Uh, Others may have written to the select board uh, expressing disappointment with the way that was handled. Um, I focused on the fact that it was handled without any consultation with the rest of the. Are you speaking as Bill? Are you speaking as Bill Dwyer now, or the or the or, or the uh, as a member of the planning board? Hmm. Are you speaking as Bill Dwyer or as a member of the planning board right, right now? Right now, I'm speaking as a member of the planning board, telling you what I did as an individual. Well, I think you're out of order. I think I think what the select board did was good. Something had to be done, and Bill, you should have called some farmers up and asked them what they thought whoa, about. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are, are you speaking as a member of the planning board or as an individual? As a farmer. Okay. I would just tenderly put my hat in and say that I have heard um, David say in the past that he leans towards appointed committees instead of elected committees. And I believe he said it's better to have us choose qualified people than to have it be a popularity contest. And I thought about that for a number of months since I heard him say that. And in my opinion, whatever it is, it's gonna be a popularity contest. We can't enforce that. And I'd rather have that be a popularity of the voters at large, you know, a thousand people or more instead of five. So that's me as a member of the town, not the planning board. But I do think that that I think it would be unfortunate if our board became appointed instead of elected. 
well, this has caused a schism in, in the town that uh, I don't like. And it makes me really doubt whether I really want to maintain my position as a public servant. You know, it, it, it really, and I, you know, I, I understand that I'm outspoken, but uh, I don't need this. I don't need this. Okay, so I put it on for the, because it is timely, uh, I'm gathering that there is no, uh, and I'm, I'm certainly not going to make a motion, but I'm gathering there's no, uh, no particular interest in taking a formal position at this time. I have no interest in taking, I recommend the planning board take no formal position on this topic. I'll then, second the motion. I agree. No, I, this is not a motion. It's not a motion. motion. Don't second a motion. You don't have to second a, a motion for discussion purposes. <laughs> there's, there's no motion here. I, I am not making a motion. I did not make a motion. I'm just recommending the board not pursue any other topic on this. That uh, this is the Board of Selectmen's doing and let them address it accordingly. Exactly. The only thing that we will be discussing possibly down the road is um, if indeed Janice re quits, retires, whatever word you want to use, and they start appointing a new person, um, do we look at trying to get something like, what is it, East Hampton, Bill? Um, right now, it's... Uh... Uh, Shootsbury advertised for something called the land use clerk okay. who would work for conservation, ZBA, and planning board doing minutes, <clears throat> writing up decisions, um, getting agendas posted, things like that. Yeah, it, it be, being a more of a conservation, <clears throat> to fill in their hours, more of a conservation person but they could also act like a assistant to the ZBA and the planning board on getting things written up and put away. Yeah, basically doing the same kind of work for the other boards that Janice is doing already for the Conservation Commission on a part-time basis. This, this leads to a little bit of a problem. The fact that we have had the responsibility to run the show, to do everything and to kind of make decisions on our own, it was so easy for the Conservation Commission to let Janice Stone do it. And she made all the decisions pretty much and wrote up everything. And they were not aware of the nuances in the law, many of the people on board. So that is the problem. That's the problem with the planning department in, in uh, Amherst and in Northampton. We're, we're talking about them. clerical right. Here. We're talking oh. clerical help, Joe, not, oh, yeah. not, okay. not a planner. Not a planner. Well, what, is, what is she? What is who? Janice. Conservation Commission. Yeah, I know, but he's talking about combining both. No, forget Janice. We're not talking about Janice. We're talking about another person and giving them extra uh, some responsibility of clerical position for the planning board and ZBA, not planning well, you know, position, not planning position. There was something thrown out within the town hall to include the planning board, conservation commission, and ZBA. That's what we're talking about. So those three people would have a ombudsman to take, uh, cater to all three boards. Of who? Conservation yeah. Commission, uh, Planning Board, and ZBA. We, we would have a, a dedicated assistant with more responsibilities than just stuffing envelopes, but not decision-making authority. Ball, ballpark, what percentage would go to conservation, ZBA, and planning? Any idea? We don't know that. Workloads? We, we no don't idea. know that yet. We're, we're just, we're, I just said this would be a curious. This would be a future discussion, depending what the Board of Selectmen 
is investigating. So the okay. Shutesbury position of the land use clerk yeah. is advertised at, I think, 18 hours a week for, for support of all three boards. Yeah. The, this person with a planning board would have no more responsibility than the planning board gives them, dic, uh, delegates to them. The board of no other board but the planning board can delegate responsibility to this person for planning. The board of selectmen do not have that authority. Only the planning board. So just by way of example, um, we had high hopes for the senior tax work off that we'd have someone in there to feed our plans into the scanner. And with everything that went on, that didn't happen. But if we could get someone, among other things, spending two hours a week scanning our plans in and writing up minutes and as well as stuffing envelopes with the notices and the decisions, um, that's, that's the level of support we're looking for. Writing up minutes alone will keep somebody busy for months because we're so far behind. And bear in mind, you know, I'm keeping the minutes. They're just all in my handwritten format. Um, and then we have the we have the template that we set up that we've been using. Um, yeah. It just takes, you know, that's 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 an hour. It probably would take an hour after this meeting to put the minutes together for this meeting. Um, it's just not- Did, Didn't time. someone in the past try to use that template bill and it just didn't work out, remember? Uh, yeah, well, it turned out there were some other issues there uh, about uh, using someone who's already working for the town for X number of hours to right. do more. But uh, uh, yeah, you know, I-, I, I, I it just, it was a direction that just didn't, uh, didn't pan out uh, for all sorts of reasons. Um, it's a manageable task, uh, but it is, you know, like everything else, it's just, you know, what are you gonna spend your next two hours on? Um, and the workload will, uh, will vary. The Conservation Commission has gotten up to meeting twice a month. They meet the second and fourth uh, Tuesdays. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's part of defining the task uh, and getting people with up, up some training so that they'll know that chapter 40A is a zoning issue and that's planning board or ZBA and the other chapters are conservation commission just basic, uh, wouldn't you, I don't think, uh, I think conservation may have a telephone. We don't even have a telephone, but, uh, um, but that's, that's what we're sort of kicking around. Something that could provide meaningful support for the, uh, the planning function. Okay, that's for future down a road discussion, possibly, we'll see. Anybody else have anything? So, Jim, I don't know if you heard me. I won't be here the first week in yep, that's August, nor the, nor the first week in uh, October. I'm going to go, believe it or not, to Sicily to okay. get some mafia influences. Okay. You said first week in October, Mike? Yeah. Yeah. October 5th. Okay, so you're out August 6th? August 3rd August and 3rd. October 5th. Yeah. Maybe sometime in January, too. But we'll talk about that. Uh, I don't care about January. I don't have a calendar for that yet. Okay, <laughs> that's next year. 
Anybody else have anything? I have nothing else. Anybody in the audience have anything? I see there's still a few number of people on. Nobody speaking up. Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you, and thank you, John.